Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Many people struggle with phobias. Now, phobias are irrational or excessive fears. The list of phobias in our society increases every year. Here are some of the most common ones. There's claustrophobia, the fear of closed spaces. Agrophobia, the fear of open spaces. Hydrophobia, the fear of water. Acrophobia, the fear of heights. Geroscophobia, the fear of old age. Aviophobia, the fear of flying. Jephyrophobia, the fear of crossing bridges, etc. Now we can smile at all these names, but remember this, that some people have to battle these things on a daily basis. And God has incredible compassion for those in the grip of fear. One of the many aspects of our salvation is that God delivers his people from fear. When Jesus left this planet, he bequeathed his peace to his people. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. And this week helping you in overcoming fear. And it's a pretty big subject, Ken. There are fears, phobias, anxiety attacks, which are pretty common today. And what would you say is the root cause of it all in general? Well, the first mention of fear was the result of man becoming disconnected from God. As soon as man's relationship was restored with God, fear subsided. So fear may be an indication that we're not properly connected to God. We cannot beat fear by trying to stop being afraid. Mm, it doesn't work. Only by knowing that we're not alone. You know, our God is with us and whatever it is that we're facing or has the potential to harm or endanger us, God is greater than that. So fear, if you like, Phil, is to focus on the danger, but faith focuses on the Lord and the fact that he's with us. So faith is the antidote of fear. For example, you know, the psalmist said, though I walk through the, sh- the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear because you are with me. Um, again, you know, the scriptures say, be strong and of good courage, do not fear, nor be afraid because the Lord your God, he's the one that goes before you. And uh, often whenever the Bible tells us not to fear, it tells us not to do that because God is with us. And you mentioned a list of phobias just a moment ago. Um, how do you go with spiders, Ken? You're not an arachnophobia sufferer, <laughs> are you? I'm not. You're not? <laughs> I mean, there was a whole bunch of them there. There's this home, so many things that people are afraid of. What's the difference between experiencing fear and having a phobia about something? Well, as I said at the beginning, you know, phobia is an irrational fear. For fear to be rational, somebody said this, that the danger must be both present and potent. Now, uh, I was in my garden the other day and uh, a brown snake just crawled along the grass Mm. right in front of me. And so there was a fear there. There was a healthy fear there because that snake is potent, it's dangerous, you know. And present. But it was present. (laughs) Okay, so once it moved on, then the fear subsided. Now, um, let me give you another example. Um, I was was, uh, being taken to the airport once by a friend and uh, he was taking me to uh, the Brisbane airport, the international airport. And as we, as we were approaching the the gateway bridge, he didn't realise that we had to cross a bridge. He'd never been there before. You know, he's from New South Wales. So as he saw the bridge, he started to panic and he was driving me. I said, what's the, what's the problem? He says, I, I have this fear of bridges, you know, that we talked about earlier. I thought, oh, this is going to be interesting. I've got to get a plane. We're stuck in traffic. We can't even turn it around. You know, we're on the bridge now. And, and so I began to counsel him while he's driving me to the airport. And I, and I basically said, well, look, you know, um, yeah, um, the bridge is present, but is it, is it a potent danger? Is, is, is it likely that this bridge is going to collapse and we're all going to end up in the sea? No. People do this by the thousands every single day. Mm. And so I was able to counsel him and, and uh, well, he got me there. I, I hope he got back all right because I, he dropped me off and uh, I left him to it. But uh, can you see what I'm saying? Mm. That fear, if, in order for it to be rational, the thing that we fear must be present and it must be potent. What about then for the Christian, a fear of Satan? Now you might call it Satanophobia. Is there such a thing? Well, there you go. Now, that's a good because a lot of people are more afraid of the of the devil than than they are trusting in God. Now the Bible says this that okay, Satan is present. Either he or one of his agents is present. Mm-hmm. But is he a potent threat? The Bible says, "Greater is he that is in you 
than he that is in the world. In fact, he's a defeated foe. So the only power that actually that he has now in our lives is the power of deceit. If he can get us to believe a lie, then he has power over us in that area. But in terms of um, him doing something to us, no, we can't. There's we have, we have authority. About. Nothing to worry about. Mm. Yeah. What about, though, let's go back to your snake for a minute. When the danger mm. is both present and potent, as was the case with the brown snake. What do you do then? What's your response? Well, of course, then the fear is legitimate, okay, because both those factors come into play. Like, okay, let's say the snake was coming towards me. Okay, then it's it's a, a real danger because it's it's potent and it's present. Okay, but we're, we're likely to be in fearful situations like that from time to time. Now, what we've got to remember is that God is omnipotent and omnipresent. Mm. So God is greater than whatever we are encountering, and he's always with us. And it comes back to what you said before, that faith is the antithesis of fear. You know, our danger might be potent and present, yeah. and therefore it's very real, but as you say, God's both omnipotent and omnipresent, and as we put our trust in him, we rise above the fear. That's exactly right. I mean, that's that's the biblical way of encountering fear or, or overcoming it is to know, yes, okay, this this fear might be legitimate in this situation. It's not a phobia. It's not an irrational fear. Uh, it's a real-life situation that, um, you know, I, I've every reason to be afraid of, but God is with me. Mm. He will never leave me nor forsake me, and, and, and his presence is a reality, you know. Fear is certainly a very real thing. In fact, it's a very healthy thing in the right situation because yeah. it does stop us from harming ourselves. It alerts us to the fact that there's a snake there that might bite yeah. me. I need to move at this stage. Move, yes, take some action. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, or stand still, or whatever the case might be. But it's when it's irrational yeah. that that then is when it's dangerous. But in any case, mm. God and faith in God is the thing that overcomes fear. Yes, and, and when you look at the Bible, uh, Phil, and the way that it, it addresses this whole problem of fear, um, one of the things that we constantly come across that are a great encouragement to our faith in God is to remember what he's done for us in the past. You find this over and over and over and over again in the Bible. For example, um, God said to the children of Israel, if you should say in your heart, these nations, okay, these nations that are surrounding us are greater than I, how can I dispossess them? He says, you shall not be afraid of them, but you shall remember well what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all of Egypt. In other words, it's it's one thing to say, stop worrying, Mm. but it's another thing to say, hang on, have I been with you in the past? Have I helped you in the past? Do you remember what happened when the, the greatest nation on earth, Egypt, came against you and you were just a bunch of slaves? How I brought you out from under their power. Now, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's lots of reminders through, through Scripture where God says, don't forget. Yeah. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. And that's what we need to remember when, when we're in a fearful situation. Yeah. Do you remember the time when um, David was uh, you know, called to go against Goliath. Yep. God called him to go against Goliath, you know. When he was being interviewed by Saul before, you know, what can you do? You, you got nothing. He said, no, hang on a minute. There was a time when I was looking after my sheep in the wilderness and a lion and a bear come out against me and try to take the sheep. He told about how God enabled him to rescue the sheep out of the paw of the lion and out of the grip of the bear. He said, now the same God that did that for me will go with me now into battle against Goliath. Now, if you think about it, I'm sure that those experiences at the time, he must have come out of those thinking, why did God allow me to go through that? You know, why Mm. did I have to fight a lion or a bear? But then he could realize that, hey, you know, God was with me on that occasion. He gave me a great victory. And now here's this Philistine. The same God is going to be with me today. And, And I think that that's how God encourages our faith. I mean, if I can say to all our listeners today, this one thing. He has brought us this far by His grace. He has been faithful to us to this point in our journey. He's been with us and those things that we've been fearful of and anxious over, He's delivered us out of and He'll do the same for us today and forever. I hope this will help you overcome fears. That's our subject this week and we'll have more for you tomorrow. In the meantime, remember you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg, including the book What's Eating You, which features topics from today's message, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision, 
www.abc.org.au. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.